Man, what's up? <laughs> I am very excited to be doing this with you, man. I guess we're jumping in. Been watching you for years, so uh, this is this is really quite an honor to to join you on Actors on Actors today, man. So this is gonna be a good time for me. Thanks so much, man. I, I feel the same. At what age did you decide to become an actor? You know, what was it that did it for you? What piece, what piece of work was it? Or was it somebody in your life that influenced you to do this? I was in university studying to be a painter, uh, an artist, and um, a visual artist. And I think I was feeling a little limited um, or else just not finding my voice and I started getting interested in photography and then in film. And I went to the university and I said, hey, how come you guys don't have an acting class for filmmakers? Because I thought it was crazy that directors weren't being taught about acting. And I went to the, 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 the university so many times and annoyed them so many times. <laughs> I remember this woman, she looked at me and she kind of, was a little snappy and she said, you know what? I appreciate your perseverance. And she started the class. He's like, if you can get six people to sign up or something, I can start this acting class for directors. I, I, my big plan was if I could get work as an actor, then I could probably get a job as a director because at that time it was, wow. you know, making films, putting together films. It was really, uh, it was really tough. But what about you? You came, you, you were a professional football player uh, that's a <laughs> un unusual route uh as well you know i played football sports and all that but really um I, I was huge into painting and drawing as well especially in high school and uh miss tremonte uh a teacher of mine told me that uh, i could have gotten a sky i could get a scholarship for painting for art um but i was like mm -hmm. battling this 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 thing of being a you know a football player and getting a scholarship and like you know, cover yeah. my own name. So I went that route. But uh, secretly, I've always loved the arts. In middle school, um, I took a, I was like in this film class where I had to edit, write, direct my own movies, you know, when I was 12 years old, 13 years old, and, out, and then painting as well. It um, was a soothing, sort of calming, meditative, tranquil event, a process that I really enjoyed. It kind of gave me, it calmed my angst, you know, it calmed my, you know, whatever the teen, you know, what teenagers go through with identity and all that. It really gave me such a calm and a peace um, that uh, I loved I loved doing it. And then I kind of lost it once I went to Morehouse and really embraced fully the, the, the football player. Then as I started to gain some notoriety in my, my, my abilities as a football player and making headway and breaking records and all that kind of stuff that, oh, it's a possibility that I can make the NFL. Why not? You know, I, I've made it this far. So uh, that's amazing. When you look at roles, when you read a script, what is that process like for you? Is it, is it you know, because you've worked with some of the greatest, you know, filmmakers ever, you know, and Fincher and, and Terrence Malick, to name a few. So, like, is it, is it script director? Is it director script? Is it, you know, what, what, do, you, what do you look for uh, when, you, when you, you know, looking to work? Either you take a chance on a script, or you take a chance on a director, you take a chance in some part of it. But you try to get the, one of those four things or three of those four things to be uh, ideal. Um, but I've also learned that, you know, best laid plans, you know, you, you can kind of, uh, you know, try as hard as you might t to protect yourself in any way possible, but you just can't. And sometimes it, it turns out the way that you hoped and sometimes it doesn't. So I, as I've gotten older, I, you know, sometimes I, you know, I, I do consider being a little less precious about things. Is there any fear or worry when you do read something like a Dallas Buyers Club or something that comes across your desk and you're like, oh, the asks of me are going to be, you know, like, you know, maybe <laughs> these aren't, these, you don't read, you don't cross these kinds of scripts every day. This is going to be challenging for different reasons. And does, does it ever scare you to where you've almost said no to it that, that you ended up doing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I definitely have said I've I have said no to things because I was I didn't think I had the answers or you know I thought maybe I wasn't ready. I remember in the beginning I actually said no 
to quite a lot, you know, is maybe naive in some respects, but I said no to quite a, a lot for many years. And especially starring in movies was something I avoided for a really long time because I just felt like I wasn't ready. Um, and maybe you never do. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I've had that feeling. And I guess I know when, a, you know, when I have a role and I start asking questions, you know, internally and I start thinking, well, God, what would I do here? What could I do there? And I have this kind of, um, you know, uh, insatiable curiosity, uh, then I know that's probably the good, that's the right role to pursue. Because I've had the other mm -hmm. thing happen where I, I've taken on a project and I just like, it's a dead end. I don't even, you know, I don't, I don't know what it is, but something about it's not inspiring me. You know what I mean? <laughs> at, what point, at what point did that realization come across like when it uh, you can back yourself into something or or there may be a good director but then the role isn't exactly like you're not you know feeling that spark and then you move forward right. anyway uh, but i think it's important to listen to your gut to your voice i connect totally to like this the notion or that feeling of uh, i don't know if i'm ready you know, not sure if I'm like ready for a role or ready for, you know, this leading man thing or, or but I, I, uh, I, I just look at it, you know, if I can collaborate, just seeing how your, you know, your career is going, just to be able to learn, I look at it as if I'm in, like in school, you know, I'm really trying to learn all that I can from, from uh, these great collaborators that I've been able to work with. And uh, knowing that where, as I grow in this and as I become more confident in, uh, look to do more things that scare me, um, to always keep that, to always um, um, have uh, uphold that, that, um, that enthusiasm, that love uh, about, the about the process and about the collaborative factor, you know, that the best idea in the room wins. Obviously, it's not always like that, but when it is, I think it's a special thing. And you hope that the movie is reflective of the experience. I, don't, I, I guess I can't say what I really want to say, but, you know, holy guacamole, what a... What a performance. I, I, I just have to say, I think it's one of the best performances I've ever seen. Malcolm and Marie oh. was just, you're, you're absolutely on fire in that film. And there's something about seeing somebody completely lose it. That's just maybe the most <laughs> enjoyable thing to watch on film. <laughs> First of all, you guys shot on film. It's black and white. And I have to say, maybe one of the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful uh, black and white films I've ever seen. I mean, those shots are, are just gorgeous. It looks like, uh, you know, it's a photograph. It's, it's absolutely incredible. Did you guys have a lot of conversation about the approach? Um, because it was so specific and the shots were so specific. When I found out they were shooting it black and white, I got really excited because I'm just thinking about the historical value for African Americans in, in, in black and white film, and uh, we haven't seen it in a long time. And to really celebrate, you know, um, you know, people that look like us in, in black and white, you know, in a, in a story like this, I, I, I leapt at the chance. I, I was really excited to uh, to be able to to go there, and um, and uh, you know, for it to come out the way it did. You know, I'm super proud of it. It's really, really beautiful, and. I mean, it's just a classic, it's a classic American independent film. And I, I really think it has a chance to, to, to live amongst some of the great American films. It, it was just, I was struck by its originality, its inventiveness, its pace, its, its, its kind of emptiness and silence, which is always something that we all forget about. Uh, so easily that's the strongest note you can play is nothing when you get your your oscar nomination I'm sure they're going to play that moment it's um when you tell her that you you love her you tell her that you love her and it's so simple and so pure and you know you go from a guy who's in histrionics and ranting and raving and is on 12 to just you really arrived at that moment. That's what this all is about. Your whole speech about fake films. You just need a reason to be needed. Because if I don't need you, then what the hell am I doing with you, Marie? 
You want control because you can't imagine the reason I'm with you is because I love you. And you know, it's always scary because you don't know if it's gonna come, if it's not, but it was just beautiful, simple, underplayed, and just gorgeous. And such an intimate movie, it's almost uncomfortable sometimes, like between you two. You know, it was pandemic, so I was really sitting with myself, you know, and, and trying to figure out, I had this idea of what my year was gonna be like, you know, I had it all mapped out, and, and obviously just coming to a halt and living in the unknown. And there's something about sitting with myself to me uh, that maybe helped me develop this character even more. Wow, just blew me away. Oh, just a, a, a really just a, a, a master class in, uh, in character and nuance. It was beautiful. I saw the for sale sign. That was for another car. Got a lot of miles on it. You a, you a salesman? No. How's the trunk space? Standard. I got to see little things, and um, <laughs> you, you were terrifying. I mean, you were. <laughs> I mean, from everything from your walk, your gait, the the gut. I don't know if that was your gut or, as soon as you stepped in the frame, I'm like, oh, he's. <laughs> we're into something. He, he, there's some stuff going on up there. And uh, I, I just wanted to know what, what drew you to that project? What drew you to the role, to the character? And what was your process going into such a, a, a just a terrifying dude? I really loved John Lee Hancock's uh, movie, The Founder, with uh, Mike Eaton. And, um, you know, I read the script and it's funny, I originally said no, I didn't think it was the right thing to do. But John and I met and I was just taken with him. I thought he it was just a, such a, he's a phenomenal writer and a director and uh, I liked his take on it. And I uh, decided to jump into this really bizarre character. Everything about him was just off and I thought this could be fun to play a guy who's you know, just doesn't really fit into the world uh, quite so nicely, but also has this really strong sense of who he is in a weird way. He's this really strong sense of his own identity, and he has um, uh, a lot of confidence. He's certainly an outcast. He's a dark horse, black sheep, and, you know, I think, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm attracted to those characters, outsiders. But I did think as, as, as scary or bizarre as he was, I did kind of fall in love with him in a weird way. I found that he had, you know, kind of a, a really fun sense of humor. And, yeah. uh, and I don't know, I found him endearing in some bizarre way. How's the trunk space? There's a particular scene uh, that's coming to mind right now within the interrogation room. <laughs> and it, it seemed it was getting really contentious to where it, it became physically apparent that there was something going on um, between you and, and, and Mr. Washington's character. I, was that was that blocked? Was that uh, did that something that just kind of happened due to the vibe that was going on? Like, can, help me t take break that down for me, please, because it was no. it was a very intense moment. You know, yeah, the, the whole thing was intense, and I. Uh... I showed up ready, ready for war. You know, I showed up ready because I knew I had to be on my, on my A game. And I came in over prepared, um, ready for anything. And you know what was great about John Lee Hancock and everybody else involved is that everyone was up for it. And, you know, every scene was about, you know, getting what you needed to tell this story, but really improvisational um, in terms of behavior and dialogue. And what's fun about playing Albert Sparma is you can say anything you want. You can do anything you want. And it's OK. They, this is a guy who doesn't abide to any rules, conventional rules. So it was fun. And I also noticed, like, on the first day, I should have worn a diaper because it was rather intimidating. <laughs> but, you know, and I was in my zone. But I noticed very quickly 
like the smallest change or gesture or improvisation and Mr. Washington was boom, he's right there with me. He's right there with me. I see a twinkle in his eye. I'd make a joke rather than just kind of like, you know, he was just so fluid, so flexible. And, and that first day he gave me a great gift. He gave me the freedom to take risk, to be brave, as brave as I wanted to. And, uh, and he met me more than halfway in every moment. So I felt mm. like, you know, I, I was training and training and training and I came in and, and got to, uh, you know, get in, get in the ring with, with one of the greats. I mean, just to answer your question as well, I haven't rehearsed in a movie in 10 years. I haven't rehearsed. I just, for some what? reason or another, never worked out for rehearsal. I don't have a rule against it, but usually I just, I'm ready to go. And I don't, I still wow. haven't even, I never, I still haven't met Mr. Washington. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, hold on. So there we was, haven't even well, met. There, there, we haven't even. That's, uh, yeah. Once you, you, were, yeah. you just arrived on set as the character and now we're that. And then it's. Like, That's it. That's it. Wow. There was a fluidity there this naturalism that was coming out of these three juggernauts. And I, I, I just kept, you know, watching it, on, you know, as an actor, I'm just like, they must, the, the trust was really there. They must, maybe they really like each other, you know, because just that, that kind of freedom to, like you said, to fail or to triumph, to all these things, to try things that you have to have a significant amount of trust for your partner. And, uh, and it, it just seemed that way. And I mean, you were tormenting Rami towards the end and just like, you were just having, it seemed like you were having a lot of fun, but, but right here, you know, there was, there was a lot of, stuff going on and I, I just you know I just, so I just I automatically think of I wonder what he did for research did he you know uh, is, is did, he, did he look up some things Did he try some of this stuff out in real life whatever it is I'm just like how how did he because it because it's so clear that uh, what's coming from you yeah thank you I appreciate it and uh, you know I, I don't feel like my work is done until I know the character's favorite color well I, I really enjoyed it man but what did you guys do on Malcolm and Marie did you do extensive rehearsals and like improv and rehearsal and write down the dialogue because it seemed so personal and so specific. Or, and did you continue the improvisational thing on set or did you, was it not like that because you had so much dialogue? Because I could see it could just go off the rails if you were just improv the whole time. Like you, I just loved who I was getting able to get in the ring with. And so being a huge fan of Euphoria, I, I, I was familiar with Sam's work before working with him in Zendaya, obviously. And uh, so I was just ready to bring my A game. I had this whole idea, I thought, of who Malcolm was. At the same time, I was having trouble finding a way in. You know, I, I had some particulars, you know, and um, but th I think what was happening was because I felt so connected to what Malcolm was saying, Sam's words. There was such a, a connection to, you know, his, his pains, in this industry, in the business, I share the same pains. I share the same frustration. I'm sharing the same identity thing, trying to, trying to set my identity as, as I want to, you know, as I'm, as which every character I'm, um, I'm taking on. You know, we had a think tank in Carmel, we quarantined in Carmel at this beautiful resort, nobody in or out. In this think tank, we just, we'd read and we, you know, with great texts like that, to me, you don't need to ad lib too much. You know, the text will lead you to the promised land, you know, and uh, and I, I truly felt that way. Tell me about uh, working with Zendaya. She's a phenom phenomenal actress. She's so giving. She makes you feel like everything is going to be all right. Like there's no way you can fail in this. She gives and it gives everybody around her so much confidence. I can't wait for people to see it. It comes out in February, I think. Is that right? Yes, Fe February. Yeah, yeah. It comes out. Yeah, it comes out in February. Yeah. Uh, um, and on, on Netflix, right? On Netflix, yes. Yeah. Enough. Yep. But it was an independent film. Like you guys went and shot it first. It was like financed independently, and then Netflix bought it, right? Yeah, we, we basically put our put our own money into it, you know. And uh, you know, it's it's the true definition of belief in something, and and uh, turned it in, and, and Netflix um, appreciated it so much that they that they yeah they blessed us with. Uh, with the, with the price, and uh, so it, uh, it worked out, and it, it, I think it's the perfect home for the film. Hold on to me for dear life. You took a, like a five or six year sort of, you know, 
I don't know if we call it a break, but you you didn't you said no a lot, I guess, to some characters to uh, <laughs> to some films at time. I, what was the motivation behind that? Was it due to circumstances? Was it something in your life, or wh wh why that gap? I don't know. Maybe you feel the same, but when I when I make films, they kind of take a lot out of me, and you know, emotionally, sometimes physically. Um, but you know, Daniel Day Lewis. I always remember reading like he went off to make shoot, learn how to make shoes in Italy for like five years, which I thought was hilarious. Who knows if it's even true or not? But it's hilarious. Like, like if you take five years off, like. I don't really have that interest in shoes, you know, so much, but you know, I make music. So for me, I'm fortunate in the sense that I always have a creative outlet. So I'm not dependent or reliant on films to give me creative reward or to make a living. So, you know, I, I acknowledge how incredibly lucky I am to have different pursuits and so maybe it was a little bit easier to walk away for six years or whatever it was. You know, there was a time where I didn't know if I would come back or not. Um, and uh, but I'm I'm glad I did. Was 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 Dallas Buyers? Was that script the reason? Is that what did it, or was it just where you were? You were ready before that. Happened? Yeah, it it was that. It was the script and and the role and the director and the opportunity and. You know, just when you read something, like I said before, and immediately, it doesn't always work like this, I suppose, but, but I like when it does, um, when I read something and then I immediately start the adventure. You know, I don't know about you, like, shooting the movie is the least enjoyable part for me. I always joke, I say that there are two, the two best parts of making movies is getting the job and finishing the job, uh, you know, and... I like I like the character build, the discovery. I like I actually like the the time that I spend uh, the investigation. I do feel the same way. I do like the investigation, the preparation, the the back and forths uh, in my with in my own head about the guy, about the character before going in, and then it's all just like one big anxiety driven, nervous. Uh, tornado of an experience trying to put all this putting all this pressure on myself and then when it's over it's like oh all right i did that but i i i have a trouble i have trouble watching myself too i don't know how how you are do you do you watch your own films do you ever circle back do you watch scenes or it's a you watch great daily? question it, no it's a great question and i always i always want to ask other actors this but i, I never really have the opportunity because um I don't watch myself at all. Like I don't look at. I never saw. I never saw one single. I saw still images from Dallas Buyers Club, but I've never seen a scene or a playback. I don't look at playback on set. And when I stopped doing that, like years ago, I looked at. I had a movie that I. I would. I saw other actors running to the uh, monitor after the take. So I would go, and then you start getting like kind of hooked on it where you're like, well, that's interesting or, you know, but I found for me, I needed to stop that to be free. And I had a lot less anxiety when I didn't do it. And I don't know about you, but I just like making movies can be so stressful. I get, I get worried a lot about, you know, being good enough and this or that, or did I get that one moment I wanted to, or this ad lib or that thing or, you know, I've been trying to practice, you know, not being so attached to the outcome of things and really just, you know, doing the best I can. That's enough. But I don't look at the poster. I never saw Sparma, uh, Albert Sparma, except in, I just saw the poster. So that's the first time I, I've seen the character. Um, you know, I don't even look at the photographs that they see. I, I asked somebody else to look. You don't kill, the, I don't like the, to kill the stills? Or no, no, no. Wow. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> wow! I'm just like, wow. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't. I, wait, I'm, I'm but too, wait a minute. Uh, what, 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 I'm learning how to cut stressful stuff. Wow. Well, but what about okay? But like certain, you know, action sequences. You know, like you know, I think a Suicide Squad where you, you have uh, some stunt work or even Thin Red Line. You know, you, like, do, is there any technical aspects that? 
that may be you know I've from had, I do have directors, I have directors that sometimes want to show me something and I remember Fincher actually will do this quite a bit because I think some things sometimes you can explain things easier uh, and I remember probably on Fight Club or Panic Room you know going back and wanting to see because you're so excited because you're like it's David Fincher excuse my French uh, <laughs> it's you know freaking Fincher so you kind of like looking at every frame is just like oh my god so you want to peek and I was younger but now I, I, I just you know if I was directing the film or editing of course I would uh, 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 you know be investigating and looking at every single second and I do that when I you know am, am doing other things like music videos for the band in which I usually direct them so I'm editing and I look at myself and it doesn't bother me in the same way um, I just want to be I want to be 1000 percent absolutely totally free but maybe you know I gotta say uh, John David maybe I'm stupid because maybe you learn a lot like I don't want even watch my movies and maybe I'm just the dumbest guy in town because I should be watching so I can learn. Maybe I should start. I don't know. I, I, I personally think you should continue. Just do what you've been doing, please. Do not change. Don't change a thing. You're not shooting the bullet. You're catching it. Whoa. So, Tenet, you worked with Christopher Nolan. You made this crazy film. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about the experience and what that was like. Um, it, it was one of the best experiences I've ever had in, in any team concept, you know, and I, I'm a huge admirer of him. I think he is a genius. I, I mean, the fact that Christopher Nolan and the great Horta Van Oytema, our DP, was telling me, don't worry about marks. We're going to, the words will adjust to you coming from both of them. Just, <laughs> I just, <laughs> you know, I, I'm like, are you kidding me right now? This is insane that they're telling me this, that they were embracing a freedom you know, a, a performance and just uh, letting, let, let, letting us get after it, however we see it. You have a film, Morbius, coming to theater soon. Can you tell us about, you know, what, is, what that was like, that experience, why you, why you chose it, what drove you to it? You know, it's a big, fun uh, movie filled with action. And I was really interested in, in, in the role because it's a brilliant doctor, a researcher who starts off trying to find a cure for a very rare disease that he has and about a thousand other people in the world have. You know, I was interested in, in, in this role because he goes on this journey from, be, from dying to finding a cure for this disease and becoming incredibly healthy and then having things change in a way that he becomes monstrous. So it's, it's a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde uh, which is, of course, just a classic um, uh, role. And, uh, but it was hard for me in some way because Dr. Michael Morbius is a little closer to the way that I talk and the way that I behave. There's something um, uh, quite nice about that and the intimacy of sharing who you are uh, with, with, the, with audiences. So Morbius is, is, I'm really excited about that one. It's, it's a Marvel character uh, coming out in um, you know, either the spring or summer, but it, it was a fun one. This would be a cure. I think it's the first time I've ever starred in a, a, a big movie like this in my entire career. So it was a new territory. I generally hide out in the shadows. You know? <laughs> Having this Marvel now behind you, is there, is there something you're looking to do because of Marvel? Is there something that you think you found that you'd like to continue upon uh, moving forward? I have a documentary that I directed called The Day in the Life of America, which was shot in 24 hours. We had 92 film crews in all 50 states. We shot 24 hours, the story of this crazy world we're living in. This is pre-pandemic and it's highly politically charged uh, documentary that takes a look at you know this wild world that is america and then i'll do uh, gucci and then off to do um a movie that was a childhood dream of mine uh 
we, we've been working on a reboot of Tron for about five years. Ooh. We're Tron, yeah, we're doing Tron. And that's what I love about what we do, though. So there's so much, you know, this art imitating life, life art. The, the 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 craft has given me so much in in the 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 process of getting to to know a character I'm playing and researching and finding out all these things or the locations you get to go on. You know, I got to I got to I, I got to do a movie with Christopher Nolan, and you know we were in like seven different countries, and I got to go to India, which I never think I'd ever be able to go to otherwise. And I just had like this spiritual like awakening, yeah. and uh, I, I just connected to the people so much, and I'm just like, wow, this is this is what the job gave me. This is what acting gave me. This, these, these experiences, these global experiences to connect with people. And, and that's why I love film. I really hope that you uh, get the nomination for your performance. I think it's, it's an easy one to celebrate. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a beautiful thing to have that documented, that performance. You know, I look forward to working with you. you I, I didn't know, I was gonna say it first. I hope to God that we get to work together, man, to get in the ring with you. I, 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 I we're going to speak it into existence, man. It's going to happen. It's definitely going to happen. Definitely. Sure.